was an intern. Wait, wait, wait. I think you uh, passed the audition. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, uh, I think uh, in the words of Paul McCartney. Uh, so I, I, I'm sure that he's talked to Bijan. Uh, you, you have, uh, uh, yeah. you have talked to Bijan, haven't you? Yeah. Seem to me to be absolute natural synergy yeah. there. I, uh, I agree. So uh, you succeeded uh, in uh, uh, blowing our minds like we like we expected. That that was just outstanding. Uh, uh, anyone have any questions of the man? Please still, still reach processing. out. To me. Yeah, please <laughs> reach out to me because there are so many. Um, you know, it's like when David spoke at our grand round. You know, every aspect of the talk really could be a symposium, right? And so the best way to Sort of get to know it better is just reach out to me and you know any one of these projects are just here local right you know and uh, and uh, yeah I, I think uh, I'm pretty confident that the you know the, the cardiovascular system and the brain are probably the two I mean there's no need to arm us about that right, right. <laughs> so, so Charles yes we've already kind of discussed a little bit offline yeah. but one of the things that uh, we end up dealing with a lot we discussed today already in our conference uh, before we got here is on uh, spinal cord ischemia, yeah. uh, especially when we're fixing vertical abdominal right. aneurysms, it's a big problem, obviously. Um, and so I'm just curious if you have any thoughts about how you can use uh, your your model for both recovery, uh, replacement, and prevention. Prevention, yeah. prevention yeah. especially. Yeah. Prevention, uh, prevention, prevention. No question. Spinal cord ischemia is a stroke, right? It, it, that's what you're talking about. Right. It's, it's exactly. a stroke of spinal cord. And so I think that uh, the uh, any and all of these strategies. I mean, so very often with spinal cord ischemia, what we see is not a complete injury, right? It, or is it a complete how often? Is it a complete how often? Is it a partial? Or it's it's pretty usually pretty partial pretty most of the time. Partial, right? So partial is good, right? Because right. I think that, again, when you think about restoration, oh, so again, prevention being the number one, we have to figure out why that happens, okay? Then there's the repair, replace, optimize part of it, right? Each one of those. Uh, concepts can be applied depending on the, the severity of, of, of the spinal cord stroke. So, I mean, just a clinically practical thing, you know, when we, you know, we have a patient that ends up yeah. with some kind of spinal cord, you know, plegia, paresis, whatever, yeah. you know, how do we work, um, or, or, or do you suggest, you know, work a pathway where these people get funneled to range? So that we can start to develop, you know, sort of kind of a collaborative synergy in trying to solve this problem. Because, I mean, if you talk to anybody who does any aortic surgery, whatever, right. you know, this is the single most unsolved problem in, in vascular surgery, and there's nothing out there that really is novel or new in approaching it. And it's been studied, you know, ever since you know aortic surgery began yeah. with in replacement. So so how do you know I mean it would seem to me that this establish a pathway where patients that have a spinal cord issue after after an aortic procedure could then get to Rancho, get under some kind of program so that's yeah. yeah. I mean I, I think that would be very worth that's that's what's then gonna start the whole Kind of synergistic thinking about it, right. talking with you. How can we do right. this differently, kind of thing? Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, Greg. I think the first thing is uh, is uh, you know is for us to uh, try to imagine what that pathway looks like, right? And then once you establish that pathway, then the um, the, the research. You yeah. know, no, we've been talking about. It. Yeah. I think that's. I think that would be the first goal, because then you have you're talking about leveraging patient care clinical care yeah. and using that to solve the problem, that gives us the platform to actually start to do that. Yeah. And off the top of my head, I already know that free patients is out of the line for one. Yeah. Oh no, we can so unfortunately you supply you with free you know, patients. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that, I think that, you know, this is, um, I just, uh, you know, we're all agreeing and you know, I want to just point out one of the uh, ways that um, so a lot of stuff you've seen today, we're really discovery level research, right? This is not like, a, you know, hey, right? I mean, it goes, right, right. It, it really is. And, and so the, the and, and this, is the, this is one very important way we designed the um, strategy of the Neuro Restoration Center. It is driven from the perspective of the clinician, right? right? We're the people that know the problem, right? 
And uh, the, we use the patient as the context, as the model, right? And the translation, if there is one, is a retrograde. It's a, it, you know, it's, it's not an, it's not an anagrade one. It's, you know, you only go to these experimental models if you can't easily or ethically do it in the human, right? And so I think that if we are going to solve this problem, I think it's exactly going to be this thing. You have to establish the clinical pathway framework for this type of, you know, flow, and then. Layered on that is when you start, look, if I don't ever interact with patients that have spinal cord strokes from aortic surgery, right. I wouldn't even understand the problem. You know, I wouldn't even know. Why would I even understand so, right. But Charles, man, that is, see, the reason that we want to do all this stuff is because this all, you know, you're, you're just talking to a few people here and then maybe yeah. even more online ultimately. But the big idea here is that this stuff's hard and we all get siphoned into our own little thing. I mean, I'm going to bring a toe doctor. I mean, you can't get any more kind of at the end of the vascular tree than that, right? But the hard part is to look out from there, and, and especially when you get hammered with pages. I mean, I don't yeah. know how many pages went off during this talk. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it takes energy to fight the entropy. Yeah. Otherwise, everyone just yeah. gets sucked. And, but, when you, but, but what you've been able to do is to put energy into the system as an operating surgeon and as a working engineer and, uh, and, but, you and know, that's that's the big idea, and it's, it's freaking hard. I think that I think that, and I, I this it's is something, great, but it's something is really frustrating. I think Fred, you can probably speak more authoritatively than this anyway. You've been such a fixture in this medical school at the education level and the programmatic level. I am. I was fundamentally tired of of you know the clinicians right being like sort of like the technician. It's like oh, give me this tissue. Okay. This is called brain. It's human brain. I have it. You want it. Right? Okay. So, you know, the idea that we well, look, the way it's designed, and this is the National Institute of Health. This is not the National Institute of Basic Science Research, right? It's like the tail wagging the dog, right? right? Correct. I mean, it's just crazy, right? So, you know, we are an example, I think, right, of how creatively, but this requires that the clinicians who understand the problem actually know Already. what's possible, right? Like, you know, exactly. if you don't know exactly. what that scientist is doing, there's no way you can even begin to imagine that this could be a solution to you, right? And so, you know, I've, I've, I've gone through the effort, you know, I went to medical school, I was an engineer, I am an engineer, right? I went to medical school because I need to understand the problem, and then I came back and circled back, and then I looked at, I surveyed all of these things that are developing, and I asked, what are they doing? How's that relevant to us? What are they doing? How's that relevant to us? And then you say, okay, based on what I know in terms of solving the problem for patients, this is what needs to happen. And you come help us solve this piece of it, right? You come help us solve this. And, and you know, and eventually we become integrated with the Paterby School, right? Um, the, the physical therapy by kinesiology is amazingly important, right? I mean, this is this is how the body end of it, right, interacts with. It. I mean, you know, the, the brain only gets information when you learn through movement. Right? I mean, look, sessile creatures, animals, like sponges, don't need a brain. And the only creatures that need a brain are, are things that move. Right. So you can't discount the movement part. This is why the, you know, my kinesiology part. But well, anyways. Happily yeah. pointed out exactly the whole purpose of this conference that, that David and I kind of envisioned is to bring to us, like, what is possible yeah. and what people are doing in the, yeah. out there. So yeah. we really appreciate your, your comment. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Narek has a presentation from for he's uh, ten cool. minutes for the SCBS his talk. Awesome. Yeah. Um,